Hello and welcome to this video on balanced and unbalanced forces. So I'm going to be talking about the effects of friction here too. Now I always like to start with a definition but force is not an easy thing to define so here's my attempt. Something that interacts with and alters matter. So for example a force might change the shape of an object or change its direction of movement or stop it moving altogether. Now we can split forces up into contact and non-contact forces. With contact forces like applied forces, so that's pushes, pulls or twists, the objects have to be touching. With non-contact forces like gravity and magnetism, the force can have an effect on an object from a distance. We use arrows to show the direction and magnitude of a force. Bigger arrow means larger force. And the, the unit of force is the Newton, after this handsome chap, Isaac Newton. Now, Newton discovered three laws of motion. And the third of these says that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So when one object exerts a force on another, it always experiences a force in return. And those forces are equal in magnitude, so they're the same strength, and they're opposite in direction. This guy, for example, his muscles are providing an upward force of 1600 newtons, and gravity is pulling the masses down with a force of weight of 1600 newtons in the opposite direction. Okay, so the directions are opposite, but the force itself, the strength of the force, the magnitude of the force is the same. When forces are balanced like this, an object is stationary. But what happens if the forces are unbalanced? Okay, so let's have a look at a very simple case of balanced and unbalanced forces. So we've got this little truck here. Now, uh, let me just say that this is a situation where we're starting from stationary. This thing begins being still. Now that's a different case when something is already moving and then the forces become balanced or unbalanced. So we start, we're in a situation where we're starting off as stationary. So let's make, uh, let's put some forces in here. We'll get this guy here. So we've got a 50 newton force to the right and we're 50 newton force to the left. So the sum or the net force is going to be zero. So let's see what happens. Nothing at all. So what we need to do in order to create a motion, in order to make this object move, we need to unbalance the forces. So let's unbalance those forces. Now we've got 150 in one direction and 50 in the other. So the net force is 100 newtons to the right. So now we've got an unbalanced force. We see it begin to move. And it is the case that the more unbalanced the forces are, now we've got a net force of 250 newtons. The more unbalanced the forces are, the greater the acceleration will be. So that's simple balanced and unbalanced forces. So when forces are balanced, the object is stationary. And when they're unbalanced, the object accelerates. But balanced forces doesn't always mean stationary. So let's have a look at what happens when the forces become balanced after something is moving, when something is already moving, what happens when the forces become balanced then? Okay, so let's start this off. Here he comes, here's our guy. Now here, this is the height, 400 and something, 430 meters going down, down, down. His velocity started high, but it's tailing off and his acceleration is tailing off as well. We're gonna let him hit the floor. Here he goes, splat. Right, there he is. So, okay, what happened there then? So the important one is this one here. This blue line here, this is the velocity in meters per second. So he jumped out and he was doing 10 meters per second, then 20 meters per second, then 30 meters per second, and he started to tail off his speed, and then it hit this constant. As we discussed, the forces became balanced and he reached a constant speed. His acceleration, meters per second squared. He, so in the beginning, he was, going, he was accelerating fast. He was accelerating at 10 meters per second per second. So every second he got 10 meters per second faster. And then that tailed off and tailed off and eventually his acceleration was zero. He wasn't accelerating anymore and his speed remained constant. So that's what happens if the forces become balanced after you're already moving rather than when you're stationary like the tug of war example we saw before. A fraction of a second after you let go of an object, weight is pulling it down. But the upwards force, air resistance, is practically zero because it's not moving very fast. Now this downwards force is going to stay the same as it falls because gravity isn't going to change. But the air resistance is going to get stronger and stronger because it's falling faster and faster. Eventually the two forces are balanced and the object stops accelerating. 
At this point, the object has reached terminal velocity. That's the fastest an object can fall. Let's add to our description. When forces are balanced, the object is either stationary or moving at a constant speed. And when they're unbalanced, the object accelerates. Let's finish by looking at the effects of friction on motion. OK, so let's have a look at the, the, the effect of friction. So what's friction? Friction is um, it's a force that opposes movement. It stops things moving. So let's, let's have a little look. Let's put this fringe here. And we're going to apply a force to it. Now, we will begin applying a force to it. And the, you have to overcome that force of friction. If you can't overcome the force of friction, then the thing's not going to move because the forces won't become unbalanced. So let's apply some force to it. Now you can see the stronger this guy pushes, it looks like the stronger the fridge is pushing back. And that's the case because the fridge is resisting the force that he's putting on it. And until that becomes unbalanced, that fridge is not going anywhere. So there we are. 500 newtons, that's the most he could push. And he couldn't overcome that force of friction. So the, the, the forces remain balanced and the thing didn't move. Unless we get those forces unbalanced, it's not going anywhere. Let's try something a little bit lighter. 50 kilos, around about 500 newtons. Let's see if we can get this one moving. Apply some force to it. Again, every newton of force we push on it is countered by the friction of the box. But can we exceed the friction of the box? Yes, we can. Now, now we've got a net force pushing one way. The forces are now unbalanced. And when the forces are unbalanced, we can get some motion. So what happens if we can suddenly put that back to zero? Box carries on. It doesn't carry on forever. Why? Because the forces are unbalanced in the opposite direction. In order to change something's motion, you have to unbalance the forces. So, to take away from this, if you want to move an object, you have to unbalance the forces. Now, in the real world, where there is friction, you have to be able to overcome the force of friction that that object is, uh, is, is fighting against you with. So, there we are. That's friction. We can reduce this friction if we use less weight, the surfaces are smooth, or a lubricant is used. And if there's no friction at all, the object will carry on forever. So there we are, balanced and unbalanced forces and the effects of friction. Thanks for watching.